Welcome back to ODT Rugby Chat for another week. Pretty sure I picked the Highlanders last week and I picked uh, Tyro to beat uh, Southern. You stick with me and I'll take you to the top. No uh, Highlanders here this week, of course, they're away to Africa and they'll beat the Kings on Saturday. But I've got big Warren Moffat from the Southern Club, the stalwart of their front row, and I've got Ryan Martin, the richest rugby coach in town because he buys every player in the world, to talk about the um, Highlanders Super 15 uh First 15 competition starts this week, and we'll talk to Ryan about that and how, how strong Otago boys are looking. But, Moff, we'll start with you, mate. Um, so you're up 23-8 against the Eels, and, and, you, and you lose. What's going on? Uh, just fitness. Fitness was... Uh, was that for you or for the whole team? Oh, me, primarily, <laughs> but uh, I'm a few weeks behind. But no, it's, um, we just switched off for a couple of minutes, and, and uh, they just punished us, pretty much. Had the front, had, what, what was happening on the front row? Not much. <laughs> just, uh, did, you, did you have your same old agreement where we just don't push? Nah, they, they don't really have an agreement with Tyra. Don't they? They don't, Dean nah. Collins? Nah, can't trust him. How did he go? Um, nah, Average? Just, yeah, pretty much. Nah, we just can't sort each other out, pretty much. It was just a hit and hold sort of scenario, which is good for us because it means you can plot around everywhere else. But um, nah, they just, they just came back and just same thing they do. They just, they just win in the last 15, 20 minutes? Yeah, they just... <laughs> They just get the ball in their hands and, they, and they, they're just so structured and they, you know, they don't doubt themselves, which is the big one. I think Runs if we had, a, yeah, if we had a held on to the pool probably the last five minutes and just okay. shut it out, wouldn't be fine. Right, I'll bring you in. Mm -hmm. Now, is it true, and I've been working on this all day today, um, <laughs> so is it true that your budget for players this year is bigger than both the Otago NPC and the Highlanders combined? No, no. Is that um, not true? No, it's not true. I would, I'd love to have a budget like that. Um, to be honest, uh, you know, a lot of what we do is... Uh, Based on work ethic and and uh, yeah, the the boys give a lot of time up to to uh, train and uh, Education, yeah. Education really important. Yeah, obviously. So, <laughs> yeah. so, but you're running a pretty big program. How many kids? How many kids do you run that in that pre, in your prem squad? It. Um, well, we have 28 boys and that uh, are de identified as first team players, yep. and then um, our second 15 play in the under 20 junior Colts grade. Yep. So and going pretty well, I see. Yeah, no, they're going really well. We're really happy with that, and it's actually quite a young team. There's a lot of year 11s, which is the fifth form equivalent yep. um, in that grade. So um, yeah, so there's 28 boys involved in that. We also have um, lunchtime training sessions for our, our junior boys. So for example, today I had 43 um, year nine and year tens, which is third and fourth form. They come in with the. No, this is oh, just this is for separate. The, this is separate. This is lunchtime training. Right. So we've got um, you know young guys giving up their own lunches to, to come and train, and, and you know our under fifteen team's been they extremely take a few successful. Of, that first lunch period. <laughs> so, so your your first 15, 28 yep. squad that you've got. Yep. Are they training every day? Um, no, they'd probably have uh, four or five gym sessions and three field base, and then a specialised session. So. We use Case Muse. Is that yeah. teen so is that teen so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so, so, but it, it's a pretty, I mean, is that, is that the norm for the, oh, for the yeah. top schools now? Yeah, definitely. We, we got a, a massive wake-up call when we went up to Auckland last year and, and, and uh, had a good look at St. Kent and, and uh, to see what they're doing, and they're on a different level to anything we've seen. And uh, I suppose all we're trying to do is be as, as professional as we can, can with the resources. I hear, the, but I hear St. Kent's, for example, this, you tell me if I'm wrong, but they had a budget of close to a million dollars. That can't be right. No, it's, it's, it, no, that would be reasonably accurate because um, they actually employ full-time rugby coaches plus a full-time conditioning coach. So you're paying, you're paying salaries on top of the resources that right. also. So um, say we played King's College who are in the 1A competition a couple of weeks ago. Um, they have got Tessa Lavia and Kevin Putt. Both who Reasonable. Yeah, who are good coaches. Right, and course, they Yeah, they're, they're full-time coaches as well. Um, you know, whereas I'm a teacher, my, my day is... Teach in the you classroom. Teach as well. yeah. yeah, I've got a maths class that I look forward to every day. So, okay, Moff, we're, we're going to come back to that. So, look, so you must be missing super coach. Surely he, that must be a big loss now that he's coaching the budgery guys or so, something. Uh, yeah, there's, there's been some withdrawals, but... Uh, yeah, you know, over it? So Baz is Slowly, coping. slowly. It's Baz a, is coping? Yeah, Baz is doing well, actually, but uh, super coach is still on the periphery. You know, he's, hanging, he's hanging around there. Uh, offering support, I think it's probably, you know, it's quite a, what about, quite a sea change. And what about the ocean liner? He's still there as well. Um, I, I, I hear he came, he, he can't get him out. I hear he oh, we, we tried. He, he missed one training. Right. And, then, uh, and said that was it, he was done, and then was back on Tuesday. So uh, <clears throat> we're missing him on the paddock in terms of him not being there. Yep. But uh, he may as well be on the paddock. Because uh, he's given so much chat. He's in everything. Yeah. yeah I, was, and, uh, I was getting a bit worried about him last year. I felt he should retire. He was actually running the game at second five. He was refereeing. He was yeah. the touch judge. We were. Yeah. We sort of talked about having like a relations kind of drive with with the refs. You know, yeah. now that he's gone. But uh, 
it's just not going to work with them there. So um, we've asked them to pipe down a wee bit. But, uh, yeah. Okay, let's talk, let's talk about the big topic. We've talked about the, the budget, which you've denied. So let's talk about everybody's moaning about takeables, boys, and it happens every year. You look, you're the number one side, so let's just get stuck yeah. into them. So what's the story? I mean, how many players have you poached this year? Um, we've got three boys that are new to school this year. Yep. Um, and They're poached, though. <laughs> <laughs> the, the biggest thing for us is, um, you know, boys are making the, the decisions on themselves to come to our school. We're, we're offering a really professional environment for their rugby. Um, so can you, are you allowed to, by the rules, go out and... Target no, players? No, definitely not. What we do at the at uh, Octo um, October, November, the year before is yep. every school is allowed to um, advertise an ODT, which um, is a great thing. Scholarships. <laughs> yep. Um, and uh, we just have a case by case. So generally, it's around a thousand. But you're days. not allowed. You're not allowed to. No. Are you? You're not no. allowed to go and ring up some kid from Taper no. and say, "Can you come and play?" No. If I was to do that, we so. The New Zealand Secretary School Sports Council investigate cases. Um, so if I was to ring a, a home and say, listen, we, you're a really awesome player from this school, come and play for us, then yep. that would be me gone. But, um, so would you, you get sacked over that as, a, as the coach? I'd get stood down for a two-year, I think right. it's a one- or two-year period. Right. The St Kent's coach got stood down for a yeah, year. Yeah, so that was last year, I was not yeah. to see that. Yeah. Um, you know, our biggest advertisement is our boys. Um, right. they, go, they go and play rep rugby with other kids and and talk about you know what we've got in place, um, the, t the type of rugby we play. Yeah. Um, if you look at the Otago Rugby Academy, you know half of them are ex OBs players. Right. So who who, so who are the three kids you've brought in this year, and where are they from? Uh, we've got a boy uh, Jonah um, who has come over from Samoa. So we went on a Samoan trip last year. Just raping the pillars in the island. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's what that's what they're doing in Auckland, isn't it? Let's be honest. Yeah, that's yeah. what they're doing in Auckland. Yeah. They don't chase each other's kids up there. They just go and. Yeah. Well, they're, they're not allowed to. Um, that they have a six week stand down rule. Right. Um, so, yeah, Joan is a really nice kid. So um, he's come directly from the island? He's come from, yeah, Robert Louis Stevenson School. Right. Um, he, when we were over there, he came and watched us and, and uh, you know, was really interested and, and had a connection with a player who was at our school, Etty Slater. Right. Um, who's actually from Samoa. Yeah. Um, and, and asked if he could come over and, um, yeah. He's, so you've he's, got him, who else have you got? Yep, we've got a boy, Tui Katoa, who's actually come down from Waitaki Boys. Now, I've heard a lot of drama about this. He was the mainstay of their scrum, but he's come to, how old is he? 26? <laughs> no, no, he's... No. He's under 19. Right. Um, yeah, we too, we emailed us in November last year and, and asked if you could come down and have right. a look, and it was as simple as that. Um, I've actually converted him to number eight, very similar story to Alex Fitzgerald last year, who had never played from, number eight before. Come from John, John Glashen, Glashen yeah, yeah, on his own accord, and yeah. uh, made his own They're pretty as well. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, so there's two, and who's the third one? Uh, we've got Hamor Samasoni uh, from Cabinet College. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I think the, the main story, you know, with Hamor is he played with a lot of our, there's 16 boys involved in our Otago Under-16 Metro team, and that right. was the team Hamor is in. Right. He's a really good friends with them, and, and he, once again, he came to have a look and, and like what he saw. Um, and, yeah, you know, that's that's our business. We, we want to develop these players, and if they want to come, I was the same myself. I left Dunstan High School to, to attend Tay Boys on yep. my own accord. So. Right. Okay, well, boys, we'll move on to the uh, Form 15, because we're, we're going to run out of time. We'll start with the forwards. I'm about two weeks behind. We're going to throw out the thug from Harbour. Mary <laughs> Lisi's gone. He's just too much of a cheat. Dean Collins. No, no he's no. not going to get a hooker. I've got a hooker. <clears throat> Here he is. What do you think of this boy? He, they beat you a couple of weeks ago, so he's got to go in. Yeah. No, he's all right? Never heard of him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Must be all right. Nick McLennan. That's um, big Trevor's son. He's gone this week. We're putting in Dean Collins. But apparently you thought, you said you thought he was average. Uh, yeah. He'd only last yeah, a week yeah. then. Uh, Richard okay. Thompson from Dunedin, he's gone. We don't like him anymore. We're going to put Tommy Franklin back in. Good. He's going pretty well, though, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, Charlie Yelp, don't even know who he is. Some guy from Harbour, he's out. I'm throwing him out. And we're putting in Nick Grant from Varsity. He's winning a ball, bit of ball lately. Uh, we're dropping big Andrew Melville, the torpedo. He only lasted a week, too big. <laughs> Josh Dixon, tell me about this kid. How good's this kid? Uh, I th Target yeah. boys, obviously. We'll, we'll see him playing Super Rugby. He's, he's is that good? good? Yep. Excellent work. Willis Scott, we're leaving in. Chris Bell, we're dumping. He's played his 150 games. He hasn't won a game since. Charlie, big, big Charlie in. Happy with that? Oh, yeah. Right, uh, Corey Rapini, I think, is going to go to centre. Mm. The dog roll. I think the dog roll is going to go to second five. We're leaving the dog roll in because he's still one of the best players playing club for him. Sean Connery. Great name. We're putting him in at fullback. Nathan Cargo we're putting in. Kieran Moffat's out. Nathan Cargo, how does this kid get to your cult? Uh, yeah, it's promising. Is he quite quick? Yeah, he's quite good with Afro. Actually, Mark Manau is probably better. But, uh... Is he better? Well, he might be oh, next week. He's gone. Tyron, mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a some sort of touch player. He's gone. Mm -hmm. We're putting in the pikey boxer, Ashton Tuck from Dunedin. Dean Mohu, we've got to find a spot for Dean Mohu. 
Is he the best half back in club rugby still? Uh, yeah. I honest, reckon he is. Honest, easy. Yeah. yeah. Corey Rapini. Oh. We've got him. We're already going on the game. Right, there we are. Mm-hmm. Right, we'll move on to the, the games this week. I'll get a prediction for you both in the games. Starting with you, uh, Ryan. Harbour, Zingari. I'll say Harbour. You're going to go with Harbour? Yeah. Well, I'll go Zingari. Zingari. Ah, oh, they beat us. <laughs> G.I. Oh. Kike? Uh, kike. Yeah, kike. And Kike, yep. Both Kike. Alain Reunion, Tyree? Tyree. Pretty much Tyree, isn't it? Uh, Pirates Uni. Well, they've been upset uh, here. I think Pirates are going pretty well. Yeah, I'll go Pirates. You're going to go Pirates? I'll have to you'll go be a Pirates, pirates boy, yep. you'll have to go yep. Pirates. Mm. Uh, Southern Dunedin, you'll be going to Dunedin? Yeah, Southern. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. What did we get about you? I'll say Southern, actually, yeah. Oh, you guys are pathetic. Yeah. Right, so this week, Ryan, your first game up, you guys yep. are playing Aspiring. Now, who are Aspiring? Is that some. That's Mount Aspiring, so um, up in Wanaka. So, so they, have they got some boys from. Uh, Cromwell as well. and Wakata, yeah, colleges right. have joined up, um, and we're on their home ground, so. Yeah. So you we win that by, what, 120, 130, <laughs> possibly? Oh, yeah. you know, we're this is going to be a tough game. I know the competition's changed now as well. You're now in a, an Otago region, yep. in a Southern region, yep. and then the top eight come Go together. Yep. Do you get any big game till you play Southern boys? Is there, is there a couple of games? Well, these boys, the big and old Kings board, will Kings match up this year? Oh, yeah. Kings always lift for the inter-school, and that's the good thing about them. You only so. beat them by 70 last year. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah, that game. <laughs> So um, is, it, is, it, is that hard for you? It is, but because you've got to you've got to get into these other games. Yeah, we replicated at training, and um, you know we we try and sometimes shoot over the hill and train with the kite prims as well. And, and you beat them, then it really proves you. So yeah, right. Okay, so so that's so how you you'd go through that first round pretty easy. So it'll be that second round before you're starting. To get, well, you're only really going to get X amount of tough games. Yeah, we we play press cup teams in our traditional inter school programs. So. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, right, guys, that's, we've been told to wind up. Um, look, the big game this week, uh, the Highlanders will beat. I'm sure they're playing the Kings. They beat the Kings. And in the big game, Southern versus Dunedin, I can't pick Southern. I'd rather cut both my arms and legs off. I'll take Dunedin, and we'll talk to you again next week.